Hello everybody and welcome to the Immune System Family Tree Worksheet. If you don't have this worksheet um, in front of you, I recommend going to Canvas and downloading it so you can print it out. That would be really a good idea so that you can take notes on your worksheet directly as we go through this video. Um, I also recommend getting a lot of different colors of pens if you have that available. Um, so just a quick orientation to this worksheet. This family tree of cells is essentially showing you um, the cellular differentiation that happens from this stem cell here called a hemocytoblast, um, which turns into either a common myeloid progenitor stem cell, or maybe it turns into a common lymphoid progenitor stem, stem cell. And then from there, those stem cells can further undergo cellular differentiation to turn into different kinds of cell types. So let's start off with differentiating what is a white blood cell on the worksheet and what is not a white blood cell. So I'm just going to kind of write like a, I'm going to draw a dotted line essentially to, set, to create a border between the white blood cells and the non-white blood cells. So essentially anything that is above the line, anything above the dotted line is not a white blood cell. So, in other words, if it is below the line, then that will mean that it is in the white blood cell family. So, the majority of this worksheet then is going to contain cells from this family. And there are going to be five major cell types that we're going to be talking about. Um, and I'm actually going to start off with telling you a, a phrase that might help you remember the order of prevalence of these five white blood cell types. So the phrase is never let monkeys eat bananas. And the first letters of each of these words represents one of the cell types. So first, is the neutrophils. These are the most common white blood cells in our body. They represent about 50% of your white blood cell population. We make trillions of these neutrophils every day in our body. <clears throat> they have like a under a 24 hour lifespan. And when you get a cut and then you have the pus on the wound site, that pus is a result of those neutrophils gobbling up bacteria, other pathogens, and then essentially exploding because they're so full of pathogens. And then they have that sort of like white milky color to them. So they're the most prevalent. The L in the phrase stands for lymphocytes. And that will be about 40% of your white blood cells. We'll talk about uh, lymphocytes in more detail in a moment. Third most common, but of course, these are going to be super common, 50 and 40. So everything else that's left is very small relative to those in terms of population. But the next most prevalent anyway is the monocytes group, and they represent about 5% of your white blood cells. Then we have eosinophils, they represent about 4%, and lastly, basophils. So something like 1% of the white blood cells are basophils. So again, to remember the order here and maybe help you remember even the names, 
this phrase right there. <laughs> so let's tackle each one in this order. Let's talk about neutrophils um, features more. So on the worksheet, the neutrophils look like this. And this is fairly similar to, you know, this should be what you'd see under a microscope too. If you're looking at somebody's blood, looking for neutrophils, what you want to look for is this type of nucleus here, which is a multi-lobed nucleus. If you see a multi-lobed nucleus in a cell in a microscope slide of somebody's blood, you can say, you can pretty much for sure say it's a neutrophil. All right, so how about the lymphocytes? So next most common. The lymphocytes are gonna be a huge group of cells. So essentially, all the cells that come from this common lymphoid progenitor stem cell, including it, are going to be the lymphocytes. So I'm going to actually put a big box around our lymphocyte group. And by the way, when if you're doing this box like I am, give yourself some space underneath these cells because we're going to add some notes there. So all of these guys, and we just will notate it here that this is our lymphocytes group. <clears throat> so let's talk about a couple of these cells. So from this stem cell here, we get three cell types that can develop from there through cellular differentiation. We got natural killer cells. Um, they're also known as NK cells. These we'll learn about in more detail later, but essentially they, they are designed to kill any cell by default in your body, unless that cell shows a proper sort of identification tag or molecular signal uh, tag to the cell. So, but by default, it wants to kill all the cells of your body. So they have to prove that they are of your body in order to serve, in order to not be killed by this immune system cell. <clears throat> then we have a small lymphocyte. We can kind of tell if something's a small lymphocyte under a microscope because of how much new how much space the nucleus takes up inside of the cell so the nucleus is probably probably taking up about 90 percent of this space and then we have a cell called a dendritic cell dendro means, uh, in Latin, translates to something like branches. So you can kind of see why this cell gets the name dendritic cell, because it's sort of a branching cell. The small lymphocyte here can turn into two different cells. We can have a small lymphocyte turn into a T lymphocyte or a B lymphocyte. And these are also known as T cell and B cell. And then next up, the T cells can also give rise to certain cell types 
and the B cell can also give rise to two different cell types. So starting with the T cell, T cell can turn into a helper T cell or a killer T cell, um, which we'll go more into their functions later on. But just to know the different names first, because the names can get pretty confusing because there's a lot of different names for these things. Um, so let's start with helper T cell. This can also be called a T sub H cell. T standing for uh, T like everywhere else here. H standing for helper. Or a more scientific maybe sounding term would be a CD4 plus cell. And when people write this, they're essentially saying that there's a, it's, it's positive for a certain kind of antigen on its surface, a certain type of protein on its cell membrane, the CD4 uh, protein. So any of these three names are okay for this cell. The killer T cell can be called the T sub C cell. You might be wondering what the C stands for because you don't see, there's only a C in cell. But the reason why they call it T sub C cell sometimes is because the other name of it is a cytotoxic T cell. Or similar to this name here, we can name it based on a receptor that's found on the cell, a CD, CD8 plus cell. <clears throat> Thankfully, the plasma cell that is derived from a B cell just is called plasma cells. And similarly here, the memory B cell is only called memory B cell. So that's great. <clears throat> so I think that's enough for lymphocytes here. Let's go to monocytes. So the monocyte you'll find is right there in our worksheet. But what's kind of odd is that the monocytes also is actually a group of cells. So even though this is a monocyte, it, it turns into these two cells, a macrophage and a dendritic cell here. We can call this whole group This group of three cells, we can call this our monocytes group. <clears throat> so something a little bit odd that you may or may not have noticed here is that dendritic cell popped up twice in the worksheet. The dendritic cell also came from this common lymphoid progenitor. So that's kind of odd that it's coming from two different, totally different cell types. And that's okay. There are different types of dendritic cells in the immune system. And we're not going to be, it's not going to be important to know the differences in this class. Um, but just know that there is a lymphoid type dendritic cell in the lymphocytes group, and there is a monocyte derived dendritic cell as well. <clears throat> um, something that you should know also about dendritic cells is that they're, they're not found in the blood. Unlike most of these other cells, this one is not in your blood. Um, that's in contrast to also, for sure, these like these erythrocytes, which are also known as red blood cells. Those are for sure in your blood, of course. And then these thrombocytes, 
also known as platelets. Definitely in your blood as well. Let's see, the only other cell that's not in your blood, I believe, is this guy right here, the mast cell. Okay. So I think that's it for the monocyte group. Let's go to eosinophils. So the eosinophil here, you can tell that it's an eosinophil under a microscope based on its nucleus. Kind of like with the neutrophil here, you can tell it was a neutrophil because of this multi-lobed nucleus. The eosinophil has a bilobed nucleus. Bilobed, so two lobes. And then the last <clears throat> major cell type is the basophils. So the basophils are right there, and they're distinguished by very large dark granules. You can see these dark dots in the cell. So large dark granules. And even if you were to look at the shape of the nucleus, the nucleus kind of has like a little, a little bump on it. So that little bump right there can help you distinguish a basophil from um, these other cells. All right, so we've gone through the five major uh, cell types and some groupings there. Um, a couple more groupings that I want you guys to be familiar with. So I want you to know a group of cells called granulocytes. So these are the granulocytes. There's three here, and then the mast cell. The granulocytes are essentially all the cells that have these little dots in them. So now that we've grouped these into granulocytes, I want to say a warning here. <laughs> Be careful. Mast cells do not turn into these three, even though we've put a box around them. Mast cell doesn't actually turn into anything. It stays as a mast cell. You have to have a cell called the myeloblast in order to generate um, these cell types down here. All right, so what is a granulocyte really? Granulocytes use these granules to help destroy pathogens. So each of these sort of granules is kind of like a vesicle that's filled with um, potent enzymes and things like that that can help degrade and destroy um, other pathogens that are well, pathogens that are entering your, your body. Of the, all the granulocytes, the basophil has the largest and darkest granules, but you can still see some faint ones in the other cells. Okay, let's see. Um, our second to last major grouping is gonna be called professional professional uh, phago, oops, that's a C, phagocytes. Professional phagocytes, and there's gonna be three of them. 
they're kind of a little bit scattered around. So we're going to put an asterisk next to the three cells that are considered to be professional phagocytes. Number one, neutrophil. Neutrophils are really good at phagocytosis, which is engulfing a cell, sort of like endocytosis, and then taking that uh, pathogen, maybe, that's a, maybe it's a cell like a bacterial cell, um, and it's engulfing it and then destroying it. The other one is the eosinophil. Also professionally good at phagocytosis. And then the last one is actually going to be the monocyte group. So maybe it's kind of cheating to say three, <laughs> but neutrophil, eosinophil, and then the monocyte, macrophage, and dendritic cell. These all three. So you could say that there's five cells, or you could say that there's these two and then this grouping. So kind of up to you how you, how you like to think about it. All right, and then the very last grouping is called professional APCs. And A stands for antigen, P stands for presenting, and C stands for cells. So these are professional antigen presenting cells. We'll again get into this more in detail uh, in a different uh, video, but essentially they are really good at taking antigens from foreign invaders and then showing them to other cells in your immune system. So we're also going to have <clears throat> three of these. And let's label them as like a little uh, like a trident symbol. So these are going to include the macrophage, the dendritic cell. Interestingly, not the monocyte. So you can't say that's the whole group, just these two. And then the B lymphocyte. So um, I guess the last thing I just wanted to mention was in terms of the professional phagocytes, um, there's a lot of immune system cells that can phagocytize, but only those that we labeled are the professional ones. So they're the ones that do it really efficiently. Um, so if you're looking up online, like what cells do phagocytosis, you might see more cells come up, but they're not professionals. All right. Thanks for watching.